Hi everyone, this is another uh, video on some practical epigraphy skills and in this video I'm going to talk about drawing inscriptions. Um, now there's lots of possible methods for drawing inscriptions and these are based on what you need as the final result um, but also based on your skill level um, and uh, your kind of satisfaction with what you produce. Um, some people are obviously fantastic artists. I am not. So um, I have ways of doing things that will produce the result I need based on not too much artistic skill. Some people um, are great with, um, you know, drawing software and uh, uh, various, you know, image manipulation software and Photoshop. Again, this is not the skill that I have, so I have different ways of doing it. Um, there's lots of valid ways of drawing inscriptions, um, but uh, you can try different things out and see what is going to work for you and what you need. So, you know, the first thing you can try is freehand drawing, where you're just looking at an inscription and drawing it for yourself. Um, even if you're uh, you're not the greatest artist in the world like me, then um, this can sometimes be really helpful just for your own reference as part of your own notes in the same way that taking down a transcription of an inscription is really helpful. Sometimes drawing some letter shapes or drawing the layout and things like that can be really helpful. This may not be um, a level of drawing that you would be happy to publish, um, but they can be really helpful anyway. Um, on the other hand, I do know people who do produce brilliant um publishable freehand drawings. So uh, it really depends on you and, and your skills, but that's definitely a valid way of doing it. Um, stuff that um, I have tended to use is um, around tracing, uh, two different methods, tracing using tracing paper or acetate uh, from the original inscription. Uh, generally uh, acetate transparency would be the best move here. So. Um, using some very kind of low tack uh, tape to uh, to tape uh, an acetate to the original inscription or uh, if possible not using adhesive um, and uh, and tracing it from the original so that is something that one can do um, usually going to be easier with acetate than with tracing paper um, and you'll need a kind of fine liner pen uh, normally a permanent marker doesn't have to be permanent. Um, obviously, if it's not permanent, you need to be careful not to smudge it. Um, then if you have a tracing onto uh, either tracing paper or acetate, you can then scan it in and that will be what makes your kind of final image. So when you scan in a drawing that's on transparency, it will scan as a kind of black and white image. So that's one option. Um, another option, which is more practical for a lot of purposes, um, and usually more practical for me personally is tracing, um, again, using tracing paper or acetate, but from a photograph or from a, um, a composite of several photographs. And um, I'll show you a worked example today of how I've used that in the past. It's not a perfect technique and there's lots to say about it, but it's something that I've used in the past. So I'll just give you a couple of tips on stuff that I've done in the past, basically. Um, and finally, of course, people, many people create digital drawings using Photoshop or other specialist drawing software, sometimes by doing a similar, actually like tracing kind of exercise, but just doing that digitally rather than um, rather than with pen and ink. Um, or sometimes um, manipulating a photograph in such a way that they can create uh, a drawing. Um, and um, people do that, again, in all different kinds of ways. There are different techniques. It really depends what works for you. Um, there's two things to remember about drawings. Um, one is that, uh, you know, they are your own artwork. So in many cases, and I can't speak for like across the board, but in many cases, um, it can um, help with copyright issues. Um, so often you'll have to pay for images of um, um, inscriptions and objects that are in museums, but you would not have to pay to publish your own drawings of those objects. Now that absolutely depends on the museum and the jurisdiction that it's in. So I'm not gonna say that that's a blanket, you know, case, but, um, read up on the copyright law of the place that you're dealing with and make sure you're on the right side of the law. But sometimes drawing your own artwork is something that can help um, 
to reduce image costs. So something to keep in mind. The other thing to keep in mind with drawings is that they are always uh, an act of interpretation in themselves. They are a scholarly exercise. You're always going to have situations where you have to make a bit of a judgment call on what should appear in the drawing and what shouldn't, um, because it's not a photograph. It doesn't uh, portray every single thing that's in a photograph. It doesn't portray every single thing that would be in a, a 3D scan, anything like that. So um, it's an act of interpretation. And this means that sometimes um, your drawing will have a slightly different text in it to the drawing of another scholar. And that's completely fine. It is um, part of doing a reading of inscription um, and it is interpretative. So that's something to keep in mind when doing your own drawings that you are making scholarly decisions when you're doing them. But it's also something to keep in mind when you see other people's drawings. You know, they have made decisions that go into that, um, no matter what method they've used. So I just want to talk you through one example of a drawing that I've done in the past um, for a publication. Um, I talk about the uh, process of doing this in a blog post on my blog, if you want to uh, read about it in a little bit more detail uh, or you want to come back to this example another time. Um, so as you can see from the blog post, this was back in 2017 um, for an article that ultimately came out in 2019. Um, so there's a photograph there of what this inscription actually looks like. So it's a bronze um, uh, sort of plaque and um, this would not be possible to uh, trace uh, in person using acetate because it's too fragile. So um, I was able to photograph it and take a lot of very close up photographs and photographs from different angles. Uh, so I was lucky to see it in person and not behind glass. So I had really detailed photographs of it, but um, I wanted to do a black and white drawing as well. Um, and how I approached it was to um, trace using um, uh, acetate and tracing paper. I kind of, you know, did more than one method. The first step that I did was print out a couple of different versions of the photograph, um, a black and white version and also a kind of um, reduced version, like where the contrast is much reduced. Um, and I'll show you why that is in a minute, but printing out different views, also printing out some of the reference photos that I had that were much more close up so that if I had a kind of query on um, one part of the big photograph, I could refer to my closer up photographs as well. Um, but even if you only have one photograph of an object, you could still do this technique. Okay, um, so this is what I kind of use. I tend to use a, a Stabilo fine liner, but any kind of fine liner black pen would do at this point. Um, and what I found in this case, and it often varies depending on the quality of the image and what the inscription is, um, that in this case, the best thing to work with was the very washed out image, the very low contrast image. And what I did was, first of all, before tracing anything, draw a black line drawing straight onto the printout of my photograph. So draw onto the low contrast image. Um, this, uh, for someone like me who doesn't have the steadiest hand, um, this is really helpful because all you're doing is drawing over stuff that you can actually see. So um, drawing the kind of outline of the piece and then drawing all the individual shapes. Um, it really helps to turn it different ways as you're doing this. So you're not ever drawing at an awkward angle as well. Um, so when I've got an outline of the inscription, this is kind of what it looked like. So this is drawing directly onto my printout. And you can see I've got some sticky notes there because there were some bits that had gone a bit wrong and I wanted to remember to correct them in the next version. So that's why I put sticky notes on it as I was doing it. Um, and then the next thing I did was um, to use tracing paper. Um, and you can see probably that I've... Um, paper clipped it at, uh, at the corners. And the other really big tip I would say is to always do a section from one corner and a section from the opposite corner first. If you start um, with say the top left corner and you just do that and work for ages, you can actually get out of line with yourself um, if the paper shifts slightly. So whether you're tracing a photograph or tracing on a real inscription, always start by doing something for example, at the top left and the bottom right. And then if you're worried that your paper has shifted, you can orientate both those corners and you'll get back in line with yourself. So that's a really good tip that someone else taught me. So um, always do that. Otherwise you can end up your paper shifting and you don't quite realize it. Um, 
The other thing that's really useful is a light box. Um, at this time when I was doing this, I didn't have one. I now have one and it's right here. It's not expensive. Um, this is my light box. As you can see, it's very, very thin. Um, and um, it's not plugged in right now, <laughs> but it's literally just a very, very thin panel um, that that lights up and has two different light settings. And so you can trace, it's just an A4 one, you can trace um, over it and it really helps you um, to see, you know, the image that you're doing uh, in much higher detail. So now I use a light box, but at the time I did not use a light box because um, I didn't have one. Um, if you don't have a light box, um, you can improvise one with a glass dish and putting a torch under it, which I did on several occasions, or you can hold it up to a window. Um, if you're happy to draw at that angle, which can be a little bit uncomfortable. Um, but the light box is pretty cheap. You can get them on Amazon. I do recommend those as something to make this process a little bit easier. Um, so this is just a, a photo on my phone of the finished drawing and what it looked like. So um, this is, you know, been traced um, from the photograph and the photograph itself had been drawn on, right? Um, this was just a phone photograph. Obviously, what I would actually do uh, to make a publishable photo is to scan my black and white image, uh, which is what I eventually did. And this is how it appears in the final publication. So you can see you have a black and white uh, image alongside the photograph. And, you know, I'm pretty pleased with these ones. They kind of um, had some details that I felt weren't present in other publications. So I was quite pleased with um with how it turned out. Um, obviously there's stuff that isn't there or is hard to represent, different types of damage are very hard to represent. There was some, um, there's some kind of uh, decoration to the handle section here that um, I chose not to represent um, because it was present in the photograph and I knew the photograph would be published alongside it. Um, but also I felt it was quite hard to depict what that was in a drawing. Um, when you try and depict these raised bumps, they end up looking kind of like holes. So um, so I didn't depict those. Uh, so you can see this is all like an act of interpretation, an act of choosing what to put in. Um, that process of like making judgment calls is similar no matter what technique you're using, whether you're freehand drawing or doing something digitally or doing um, some kind of tracing based drawing. Um, but I hope this has been helpful. As I say, this is not like some amazing artistic technique that I've, you know, honed over many years. This is just how I've ended up doing stuff. And I hope um, this might be useful for stuff that you would do in the future.